If I were to tell you that a company like Aston Martin were going to design a bus to be used in London, or that a company that makes this would simultaneously make the fastest motorcycle you could buy in the 90s, you would probably laugh at ideas like that. But the reality is, both of those things are true. And this could well become another crazy example of a brand who are trying something certainly very different. But here's the crucial thing. Not only is it different and certainly ambitious, it's actually something which they have more than a little bit of experience with, because the company in question is S. CG. Most of us would, of course, refer to them as Glickenhaus or Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus, famous in the Lamar world, famous in the supercar world. To say famous is, of course, a bit of an overstatement, but plenty of us here on the channel will be well aware of them. This particular announcement from them, though, is a very, very out of left field one, that's for sure, because they're actually conceptualizing and testing very soon a truck. What's even more special, though, is it's not just a truck. They're trying to fill this void in the market, which we currently arguably have, of just a proper old school truck in terms of using it, in terms of being rugged and capable, but also with some alternative thinking, which future proofs it at the same time. See, at the moment in the US, the cheapest diesel truck you can buy brand new is over $50,000, and it's a Chevy Silverado diesel. For this truck to match that particular Chevy, it's going to have to pull around 13,000 pounds and carry about 2,000 pounds. That, combined with a roughly 50 grand price tag, would allow a Glickenhaus truck to enter the market at a similar price range to other American trucks like the Silverado. The crucial difference here though is it's not electric and it's not conventional, it's hydrogen. And when I say hydrogen, there are some people who might think, well, it's just a concept that's not gonna go anywhere. Well, actually that's where things get really cool because a few years ago, back around 2022, Glickenhaus actually already made a hydrogen powered truck. And not only did they make it, a vehicle inspired by an old Baja buggy driven by none other than Steve McQueen, they actually raced it in the Baja and had back to back victories, including beating Ford in their Bronco by five hours. That particular Baja buggy was hydrogen powered as well. And this is doubtless using things which they've learned from that on more of a production scale. Now, some of the things which they're aiming for here are pretty ambitious, and certainly the hydrogen aspect of this whole idea is, of course, the biggest gimmick and the biggest risk. But fundamentally, we're only getting a brief look, if you will, of what this could look like. You can see some design cues of other trucks, probably most notably the Ford F-150 style center window section there on the side, and it probably would look different to this in practice. But the point remains that they've officially shared this on their Instagram. They answered a couple of comments from people asking about it. Apparently they're going to be testing these trucks within the next few weeks. They're aiming for it to be not only a hydrogen powered truck in a general sense, but one with a carryable tank so that you can swap out the tank when it's empty for another one and carry on driving with up to 800 miles of driving range, plus refill capabilities to create more hydrogen as well on the go. In this black central section on the side, which is where the tank is located, they want to design it in such a way where the tank itself can be removed, and then you can carry a second one on the vehicle as well, which is a great idea in terms of extending the range. You could say, well, why don't you just make the tank twice as big? But of course, at that point, you're going to sacrifice some loading room. Now, speaking of that loading room, they're planning to have two and four-door variations, so single cab and crew cab, in other words, with either six-foot or eight-foot beds. And one of the crucial things that they're aiming for is not only to be a rival on price, but also to be similar in terms of performance, towing capabilities, and in other words, living with the truck. If not, of course, exceeding them. In some cases, and certainly if it has 800 miles of range, that would by far exceed many diesel trucks on the market. Now, as you would assume, this in particular has the goal of stuff like fleet use, work trucks, farm trucks, even like game preserves, that kind of stuff. And I really do hope that they succeed in this endeavor. I think the fact that they've already entered the Baja and had great success there is more than a huge step forward in terms of just making this viable in any kind of sense, if this totally came out of nowhere, which for many people it probably still did, but if there was no previous experience at all, it would be very, very odd and very pie in the sky, but it isn't. They do have that experience, albeit in motorsport form, and let's face it, a lot of motorsport tech and experience can and does trickle down into a production vehicle. Now, whether or not they succeed is another thing entirely. Of course, they're a tiny brand going up against massive established names like Dodge, Ford, Chevy, but sometimes all you need is a genuinely different and good idea, and that can give you all the edge you need. Yes, they're not a truck brand, they're an exotic supercar brand, but hey, I love the fact that they're trying something different, and the thing which ideas like this always make me think back to is Porsche.
Porsche. And the reason why I say that is because I believe the smartest decision Porsche has made in the past 30 years was actually to make the Cayenne. Because while simultaneously being considered as probably one of the ugliest Porsches of all time, the Cayenne almost single-handedly took them from being a more or less pure sports car company to being what they are now. Around 20 years later, they are a force to be reckoned with in every single thing they do, from motorsport to road, even to electric vehicles, which 20 years ago who'd have thought you'd say that about Porsche. To me, that's something to be respected and admired, and it's a fantastic achievement to expand Porsche into so much more. This could well be that for Glickenhaus. I don't think they necessarily have the goal of becoming something like Porsche, Toyota, Ford, any of those others, but even if this just succeeds in its own merits, it would give them way more funds to support what they probably really enjoy, which is the racing side of stuff beyond that. It's just a really solid business choice if you can deliver an alternative thinking, future-proof, green energy, but at the same time rugged, practical, and crucially, price-rivaling alternative to the establishment. Well, simply put, that has a huge amount of potential, and yeah, I really hope that they succeed. It's all too easy to sit back and say, oh, it won't work, this won't work, that won't work, it's a stupid idea, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, we'll have to wait and see. I personally, at least, wish them the best. And I was originally planning, actually, to cover the new update in TDU Solar Crown, because, of course, Ibiza has been added to the game. It didn't quite work out because of the server maintenance period, so we'll cover that probably next week now. That's it for this bit of news. Of course, check out the playlist here on the channel if you want to check out other news stories and vehicles which you might have missed, and of course I'll see you in future for more. But for now, thanks for watching.